let's go through, it's always fun to try and run something, we'll kind of give you an idea of uh, how you would just do a run, right? You know what an amplitude sweep is? Yes. All right. So we'll take our material, and what we're going to say is that we're going to look at, all right, this two-plate model, we're going to small it, start at really small deformations, and then move to bigger and bigger ones, right? Mm -hmm. Just check the amplitude. This period, we're going to do a fixed frequency, which is going to be very slow. Small deformations, and it look like it's going to be fast at large ones, right? And that should give us our linear viscoelastic range, right? But at what temperature? Well, Dr. Bardet was saying hey, 25 degrees, right? It's about 24 right now. If I look at these samples, they look a little stiff, right? So this is wax. It can right. crack, fall apart, stuff like that. So I think what we'll do is um, we'll load it at a higher temperature, okay. right? Trim it and everything. But we'll, and then we'll run it back down to 25, let it equilibrate, and we'll run. Right. All right. A couple things we need to do there first is that, hey, if we're going to run at, say, 25 degrees, we need to set our gap at 25 degrees, right? So first thing I might want to do is say, okay, if I'm going to save all my changes that I did, if I'm going to run this sample, I want to run an amplitude suit. How do I get started? Uh, one thing I can do is come over here and I can click File, New, right? That's the same thing as hitting this little white sheet right there. Right. What that opens up is our rail manager, right? Right. There are, in the rail manager, there's this little drop-down box right here. And this drop-down box, I can select standard templates. When I do that, it opens up a whole bunch of tabs. Right. I know an amplitude sweep is an oscillatory test, so I click on the oscillation tab. And you see here, that there's a bunch of tests listed. There's amplitude sweeps and frequency sweeps. Amplitude sweep, linear viscoelastic range and structural strength. And then there's another one called amplitude sweep, long term and structural strength. I'm not sure what the difference between the two is, but it doesn't matter. I can just click on one and say OK. What that will do is it will open up that template. When we first started talking, you remember how I said that nice big blank screen? Think of it like Excel. Well, don't get too much into, like, oh, trying to understand what everything is there. It's just like in Excel. I opened up a template, right? This template has some graphs. It's going to show what I'm actually running, right? It has some tables where it'll store raw data, right? Down here, you can't see it yet, but it has a measurement window where we actually program what is actually going to happen, what amplitudes and things you're going to go for, right? I could look through all those, try to understand what's happening, or we make things easier, too, by putting in what's called an application workbook assistant, right? You want to get started. Ah, I want to run something. I went to standard templates. I pulled up an amplitude sweep, right? I want to try to run with this amplitude sweep. So just go to the workbook assistant, click on the buttons, and then follow the procedure, right? First thing we need to do, it says set up rheometer. Click on that. Oh yeah, yeah, if it opens up, you remember, first thing I should do is set my zero cap. I'm going to have to get it ready, right? So what I'm going to do, and I want to run at a certain temperature. I know I want to run at 25 degrees. So I'm going to put in here 25 degrees, and I'm going to say set. What that does is it turns on the Peltiers and says, OK, go up to 25 degrees. You're going to have a little trouble getting there because everything's opened up, right? But for right now, what I want to do is let this system equilibrate, so I just hit 25 to get it started to go up there. And now I can hit zero gap. It's going to happen. It's going to go down and figure out where the zero gap is. It's not quite at 25 degrees yet, right? That's okay. How do we know when, when it goes it's to 20? When it goes down and sets the zero gap, it's going to raise back up to the uh, measuring position, one millimeter. What I'll do then is I'll lower the hood and I'll just let it sit there for a little while. Until, when, why? If I put that down, now I can let this equilibrate, right? Okay. And once it looks like it's at 25 degrees and really stable, I'll hit set zero gap again. Okay. We are at roughly 24 degrees. We went to 25. No big deal. But let's say you wanted to run at 50 degrees. Okay. It's going to take it a little bit more time to warm up to 50 degrees. Here at room temperature, 
not such a big issue, right? It's flickering a little bit in that last digit. For the most part, 25 degrees is room temperature. It's probably close enough, right? Um, but I'm trying to show you the accurate steps. If it were going to 50 degrees, I might have set 50, gone down, put it there, and it still is not equilibrated yet for 50. So while it's doing that, we can gather our samples, pour our molds, let that equilibrate, right? Okay. Once it's done, I would say set zero gap again. Why? Because now it's equilibrated at that temperature. Again, it's, it's probably okay to begin with, but I'm just kind of showing you the real steps to go through. Right? So it goes down, touches, finds the zero gap. It's looking at normal force pushing back up, and it's going to raise up to its measuring position. Okay. It's all just one so of them, one of them above the zero gap. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever I put in here is the measuring position. Okay. Right. In this case, for a parallel plane, standard is usually one millimeter. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, but now I know I want to actually load this sample. And this sample, well, it's kind of waxy. I might want to melt it a little bit to get it ready. Right. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay. I'll run this up to about 50 degrees. What am I doing there? I'm letting it just kind of warm up. Right? right? I'm going to try this. I'm kind of learning how to do your samples the same way you guys are going to have to. I can just tell, like, that's hard enough. If I come in like that, you know, if I try to trim it and stuff, it'll brittle. It might flake. It's like a wax, right? Uh, but if I soften it up, I can actually load it and get a nice geometry in the measuring system. And um, I can try running it that way, getting it all set, and then yeah. bringing it back down to a cooler temperature. Okay. So a little trick. I'm not going to raise it so high this time. I'll say I'll do something like, hey, I'm just going to raise it to 40 millimeters. Looks like it's about 50. I don't really care how accurate it is at this point. I just want it to get warm in there, right? Yeah. Because now I'm going to go lift. Okay. I want to try to go to 